Tonight's program will feature strong adult language and situations. Fear discretion is strongly advised. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Try Hard Stream. I'm Hexagrams. And I'm Kip. And tonight we've got a show match spotlight on CP Pro Lane. We're going to do Highlander on Pro Lane between the Grammar Nazis and the Violent Femmes. And jump right into the teams right away. Grammar Nazis, spelled terribly wrong. Oh, God, I think. it hurts. It hurts. That's, that's the joke. Okay, for the Grammar, Grammar Nazis, we've got Scout is going to be Dragon, Soldier is Lunar Binary, Pyro, Statutory Break, oh. Demo, Veloxenium, <laughs> Heavy, Cheat Commando, Engineer is Dapper, Medic is October, Sniper is Bros, Spy is Elusive Reality. Alright, on the Violet Femmes, we have Gib is Scout, Rainroll is Soldier, Poppet is Pyro, Fixer is Demo, Only's Angel is Heavy, Pigeon is Engineered, Tom Servo is Medic, Hilkus is Sniper, and then a Bomb in the Lasagna is Spy. And uh, note that uh, most of these players are female, that's why they go by Violet Femmes, but they have a couple ringers in here who are men. Yeah, uh, Fixer, notably, kind of, I think he put together this team. Ranroll, also a male. Pigeon, pretty sure he's a guy. Not sure, though. All right. That sounds about right. Uh, some great names in there, though. Statutory Rake and Abominable Lasagna. It's, those are amazing. I wish I was clever. I'm clearly not. And here comes the logo, which means it's time to go. All right, and we are on the Fixer cam to begin with. I'm going to watch his role out here on ProLang, which uh, is not a map, co uh, to my knowledge, is not commonly played in comp. At least it hasn't been in UGC for a couple of seasons now. No, it was Fastlane, then they added a couple things, and now it's ProLang. Quick story about Fixer before we really get into it. I was on a 24-7 Badwater pub, as I am wont to do sometimes for no good <laughs> reason, and there was a 12-year-old talking to everybody about him. He played against this demo named Fixer, and he's so good, and Fixer's amazing. So Fixer, you've made some 12-year-old gym shorts a little bit tighter. So oh. You know that. oh wow, immediately we see a headshot, uh, Red's October medic going down right there, so Red losing an important player over there in mid, but uh, Tom Server still up for blue as we uh, watch now the Elusive Reality cam, uh, Tom Server may not be long for this world as Elusive Reality does get in behind and takes him down. Yeah, down. two step. Tom Servo, surprisingly, a woman, so uh, there you go. It, it is confusing. <laughs> Tom Server also surprisingly was a puppet on Mystery Science Theater. Oh. Well, gumball-headed puppet. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Um, and the bomb and the lasagna. I get to make this joke. Uh, uh, Garfield's worst nightmare, a bomb and the lasagna. Oh, I was hoping you were going to go Garfield. I'm like, please, go, <laughs> go Garfield. Go Garfield. Also, a bomb and the lasagna on Mondays would be his worst nightmare. But okay, that's over now. Uh, Blue is pushing in, but here comes a huge push by Red from the, uh, on this side, the left upper deck right there, pushing through and bending that point. So a nice uh, medic heavy combo right there from the bio oh, uh, from the grammar Nazi. Sorry about that. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm always tempted to make terrible Nazi jokes that you always see on the internet. Like, I did not see that coming, but I think mm -hmm. we should go highbrow with it. Like, you know a lot about history and whatnot. Sure. Any, any puns? Um, nothing prepared, but let's let's see what flows organically. Anyway, we're on the pigeon cam, and he just took out the heavy with the Widowmaker. There goes. Oh my goodness, took out demo and then medic. Widowmaker going huge. Oh, I could probably make a joke about that, but uh, I really don't want to. <laughs> I really don't want to. <laughs> let's just let people fill in the blanks where we we're doing Nazi Widowmaker jokes. Oh God. <laughs> Going huge with that, that man, the Widowmaker's great with that, not that reload, and you're in that close range, and you get a lot of shots off, and man, you can really rock some damage with that. Yes, I love to see So, Red, uh, Red Team got 
annihilated there, the Grammar Nazis, and Blue's going to take advantage of this, push you the point. Now, it's a 5 CP map that, um, like you said, a lot of people haven't seen, and, you know, it's pretty much a very open 5 CP map. You're not going to have a lot of hallway fights, a lot of uh, close quarter combat, until you get to the last points where it kind of narrows off a little bit, like 5 CPs do. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, snipers can really play a huge role here, and we saw uh, Topher going down immediately uh, in the very, very beginning. So uh, keep an eye out on our snipers here. Uh, Hilkus, and who else do we got on sniper? I thought it was... Do, do, do. Bros! Yeah I, might have... yeah, I missed that one in the beginning. Bros. <laughs> Bros and Hilkus. You know, there's, it's kind of funny that we're like this mostly female team against some of like the most manly names possible on the Grammar Nazis. You've got a, a rape joke and statutory rake, a guy straight up just named Bros. <laughs> then you've got like dragons and commandos. It's kind of a weird juxtaposition here. Yeah, absolutely. See, elusive reality doing some work. He's gonna uh, try to camp the the telly right here, but got impatient and just gonna go for the sap and then shoot that thing to death. As uh, that will play an interesting role in uh, getting the blue team out to mid faster. But here we go. Blue's trying to push out this uh, narrow hallway. So this is one of these little chokes here that you do have to get through to get to one of those open areas. Right, but there also is like a whole wide swath to the left too. So you're really going to have to see teams coordinate which side they want to go on or if they want to do that, you know, double pincer move. Gib trying here to get the pyro, protect his medic, and does in fact, uh, but Tom Silver goes down in any way to some uh, well-placed sticky, so uh, a futile effort, but uh, well, well played. Yeah, red rocked again, only three players up. Blue, not a lot of players up, and a lot of people really hurt, but they're going to take this point anyway. Yeah, being very aggressive here, I'm sure I could make a... Uh, oh, okay, uh, the Axis Force is pushing into Russia. There we go. <laughs> There All right. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Soviet <laughs> Union. There we go. Uh, a little too aggressive. I'm not sure what they're getting into right here. Um, but here they have the numbers and the heals, so they uh, may be able to pay make a push right here. But uh, Red will be getting those respawns in very soon. Yeah, Red's still only up five players now. Blue's got their full force ready. We're going to see if we... Now, I don't think... Have we seen an Uber even come off yet this game? You know what? We haven't. These meds have been going down so fast. Oh, man, that's very unfortunate. <laughs> the... Oh, what are medics called in army? They're just medics, aren't they? I believe so, yeah. Alright, well, there you go. <laughs> oh, and it, it comes to this reality, uh, getting that backstab on wheel, taking out the heavy, and here the crits come! That's why we haven't seen any Ubers. Yeah, delivering the pain. So, good job there. I mean, it's it's a good defensive crits, no, uh, blue is only four up, three up now, a servo goes down yet again, and I think, yeah, red's gotta push this back. Yeah, absolutely. It would be too, uh, too hard for them to push out if they allowed Blue to get numbers right there because they only have that crits, but uh, with this immediate movement, uh, they're in a better position. And we'll see if they ride this moment because Blue just now getting respawns and they spawn back after Red Cap that point, so Red should have local advantage here too. And indeed we see a one NG on the point. Again, Red going for this upper deck rollout. Uh, it's been pretty successful for them so far, and in indeed... Uh, they will be able to start the cap on mid, but uh, there's backup going on blue, and they're not able to get it. Oh man, who is on? Why? Why is there heavy by himself? <laughs> I, I don't know. He's going rogue. <laughs> rogue heavies uh, are he's, best heavies. He was offended by your Soviet mix-up there, and he's just trying to get some camera time, prove you wrong. <laughs> there we go. But a nice cap, nonetheless. Red is going to retreat here to. The last. They do have this crit, so we'll probably see that pop uh, immediately, actually, as they're trying yeah. to go in a huge battle. It is down. crackling. They get two kills off on it first, though, and then switch over to the soldier after the heavy dies. He gets another kill, too. Spy, spy, spy. Finally, Spot gets the stab on Fixer. Wow. A lot of poor defenseless air particles got knifed up before Fixer finally went down. <laughs> we do have a dragon all by himself here uh, defending on last, uh, but Red is going to push out and control that second point. Ooh, big bomb in from Ranroll, taking down statutory rake, but uh, that will be... Oh, he actually takes an elusive reality right there. And still alive? Yeah, two health, running away. Now he's down. There you go. Blue on oh, the just carnage. carnage. Carnage on the point. 
Red only four up now after the heavy just rolls in and annihilates everything. The medic did stay up for red team though. It's just medic and demo up right now, and I think they're gonna have to retreat to last here. Uh, looks like Red will get some respawns right here, so they're not in a terrible position to defend last. Yeah, they've been on their back foot most of the game though, and I don't, I don't really know what to say about how they could push out on it. They're doing good with their critzes. They're getting crits faster. Blue team has not really had much of a charge to speak of. Yeah, and uh, blue. Oh, nice head sh or body shot right there. Hilkas taking down lunar binary. Uh, blue did have a good player advantage. Uh, few seconds ago, but uh, those spawns by Red uh, really stopped him. And oh, here comes <laughs> Chief Commando trying to push out of last. Again, Heavy all by himself. He's probably got this, like, Napoleon complex, but the opposite of Napoleon. You know how Napoleon would always think he's a... Uh, oh, hey, what, what was that? <laughs> a quick cap from Violent Femmes uh, takes it 1-0, so no one saw that coming, including the casters. <laughs> You don't see the competing rollouts here. Yeah, and uh, rollouts on this map, I don't know if there is really a standard rollout. We see them both going very different directions. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks like the Loxinium is going to get there significantly later than, uh, than Fixer right there. And that's uh, probably going to play a role as Fixer's now just putting a bunch of spam in that upper deck that Red has been uh, known to come out of. Mm hmm. Yeah, and, and all the rollouts don't matter as much, in my opinion, in Highlander, because it's more about the teamwork and getting most of your team there on time. Getting your demo out quick is still really important. Oh my god, look at that kill feed. Yep, that's uh, D-Day, right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Blue doing some crazy work, although they're, they're taking uh, casualties too. Heavy goes down, but Sniper's gonna cap it all by uh, herself right there. Oh, and Dragon's gonna come in, try to clean up. Uh, will he be able to, though? Took down the demo, and uh, Spy make it away here? Yeah, Dragon doing some good work. We've always seen him on the defensive cam. He seems to be one of the only ones who's always alive, just holding the fort. Yeah, that's a really tough situation for the scout, of course. Uh, it looks like, oh, they found out this Spy, and finally, Abominable Lasagna goes down. But uh, she did a good job staying alive with them. I love that Obama Lasagna's name it has like question marks and exclamation points too, because it's like a bomb in the lasagna. <laughs> Someone at some point has screamed that out loud. Uh, you, you never expect the bomb in the lasagna. Uh, anyway, here comes Red trying to get the point. Oh, there's a pan out on the fixer, but not even, or on uh, I'm sorry, that's Veloxanium. Not able to get uh, the pan kill. Unfortunate. Love to see those uh, pan kills. And no, that was fixer. I should have gone with my first instinct. Yeah, and red just dead mostly again. Their classes are up. Um, did just get respawned, but the classes that were up are very low health, not battle ready, whereas blue is all up again, all pretty fully healthed, um, but they're not pushing yet. Another big pick by Obama Lasagna. She's doing some great spy work. <laughs> Uh, plus two points to game right there. Uh, Red, as you were saying, they do have this momentum right here, but it doesn't feel like they um, are doing enough. Right. And Gibb is going to try to come in here and takes down uh, October right there. And that uh, was a hunt for Red October, and he did a good job <laughs> uh, succeeding there. Uh, uh, that was good. Yeah, yeah it's was, a World War II novel, too, so that's like... Double whammy. I get two points that, for that. Is that uh, Michael Crichton? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Well, I don't know. He writes everything. Everything war-related is always a Michael Crichton book. Or John Grisham. I don't know. One of the two guys. I don't... I don't. Clearly, I'm not literate. So, <laughs> let's uh, move on. No more book talking for me. <laughs> Tom Clancy, apparently. Tom Clancy. That's it. That's who I was thinking of. You know, it's just... Hmm. Clearly couldn't... Clearly didn't say it. But imagine, you know, Michael Crichton writing a World War II on a submarine with dinosaurs. Alright, I'm imagining it. I like it. Uh, you know what Red Team doesn't like here? Being on their back feet again! Uh, they're just having a hard time, even when they kept me, just continuing to, to... I don't know, to be shut down by Blue right here? I'm not sure. Uh, do you think it's the DM fights that are really doing it for them? I mean, they're always losing one or two more players in their straight-up fights than Blue Team is. So, you know, even when you're winning positioning and you're winning advantages, 
being down one or two more players is always just crucial. They're losing important classes all the time, too. Uh, it's it's really hard to say. They're just not picking the right fights, and they're losing almost every straight-up engagement. They're always down numbers, so you have to kind of ask yourself as a team, do we wait for everyone to get up and try to take a fight that way? Or do we fight this 4-on-5? Do we fight this 3-on-5? And, you know, neither one is a really great option. Right, right there we saw um, some really aggressive heavy medic play following up uh, another hunt for Red October right there, so October does go down, so going to buy a nice uber advantage for Tom Servo as they are going to push into last year. I would, I would think soon they are going to get these spawns up uh, relatively soon, and... Um, May go ahead and do it. Yeah, I, they know they're going to have full advantage. Um, I think they're j they'd rather just do a 9-on-9 nine -nine fight. They know the other team's been running crits, and, you know, what's the point even if you're going to Uber into them? Right, right, right. Uh, so I think they wanted to get everyone up, even though they had uh -huh. numbers. Or no one's seen this teleporter, though. <laughs> oh, we'll see if it does anything. And it looks like it did get elusive reality behind the lines. So it takes out uh, Engineer right there. We'll see how big of a deal that is, but Blue did push in indeed using that Uber. Uh, not surviving after it, right. though. Did not have the numbers to come in and back that uh, heavy medic combo up. And they still almost capped with only a sliver oh, left there. And, oh, a scout just sneezes on the point. Yeah. And it, and it caps right there. Sneeze, 2x sneeze, man. That's you know, <laughs> overpowered. I'm so OP. Oh man, so I uh, kind of a misplay right there by the grammar Nazis. Um, it was another another push into Soviet Russia, if you will. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just throwing <laughs> minute bullets, really. <laughs> uh, you can't beat Russian winter. That's uh, that's all I gotta say. Anyway. Uh, no, no, they've tried. Year, <laughs> many have tried and many have failed. Anyway, we're gonna have to see grammar Nazis get really aggressive here. If you see, look at our timer at the bottom right. We got five and a half left, and they need two points. And it's very possible on pro lane, which again used to be fast lane because it is a very fast moving CP map, wide open spaces, get some kills, get that momentum rolling, and you can cap these points quickly and win matches. It's a good start. That is another good start. Yeah, taking out uh, Hilkus and uh, well, right there, heavy and sniper could do something, but uh, oh, blues. Red is just bleeding players. Again, October did stay alive, but I think he's still running the crits right there, so... Yeah, and they had huge advantage a second ago, and they still... They have more players up. <laughs> Demo comes in and just gives the scout. Then he dies from an errant sentry gun bullet. But Red had a big advantage there, and they just... It, it seemed like they had advantage, and then they lost another couple players and couldn't really push it. Seems now they are going to get control of this mid and take this point, though. Putting some time on it. Again, it's time sensitive right now. Uh oh, Hilkus getting October right there. October had a hundred percent Uber charge or crits charge, not able to pop it uh, without that uh, medic heavy went down as well, and uh, that's going to end this red push for mid. Ouch! Really, really unfortunate right there for grammar Nazis. Not what they needed, and uh, yeah, as you said, time is ticking down. They have to be aggressive. Two points is uh, definitely uh, something you can do. Um, here's NG with a level three sentry gun on the point. I yeah. like it. But I now that's aggressive. Don't like that position. Yeah, <laughs> immediately yeah. spam down. So a Dapper had a good idea right there, but uh, just uh, not executed perfectly. The pr that's the problem with this wide open mid, though. There's really not a whole lot of great sentry spots for you to set up that level three. Uh, every if someone's gonna have an angle on it almost regardless of where you put it. Especially with Highlander, you have a lot of classes taken out. Anyway, we see Gib in here behind the medic. We'll see if he can uh, complete that. I'm not going to make another head for Red October joke, but uh, he doesn't. <laughs> Goes down. Nice defense from uh, Chief Commando to help out his medic. Oh, but here comes the Uber. A heavy goes immediately down. Uh, nobody here on second. There are a bunch of stickies. But just take down that demo, and those stickies are gone. Dragon coming in behind the Bolivia's heavy, but Hilkus helping his heavy out and taking down that scout, that pesky scout. That uh, heavy just so many hit points doesn't even realize when he's uh, being hunted by a scout. <laughs> it's just a little gnat in his hair. <laughs> a grammar Nazi. Ah. Uh, no. <laughs> They did spell it with a T. And, oh, uh, yeah, well, uh, seen Blue push in here and uh, good demo work by Fixer just putting a lot of stickies at these doors so it's uh, not allowing Red to push out of here once they know it. But now they are. Fixer did abandon that uh, strategy. I'm not sure. I like that he went for the upper route. But uh, Red's going to have a hard time pushing out of this regardless. 
Yeah, and now here comes the point in the cast where like I start to really root for a team because I hate any team putting a zero on the board. Yeah. It just feels bad overall. So we got two minutes twenty left, and I'm gonna unabashedly root for grammar Nazis at this point. <laughs> there you go. It's gonna be really hard. There's a lot of time on blue. A um, lot of blue time on the point, and unlike last round, red team is just planting themselves with that heavy. Not gonna get that uh, sneeze cap, if you will, anymore. Yeah. But again, that's gonna place them on their back heels. They will not be able to push out of this. I don't know why that's the most disgusting word I've ever heard. Sneeze cap. <laughs> that sounds like some terrible piece of clothing, or... I don't, oh. I don't understand. Some old-timey medicinal purpose, like, oh, he's sneezing a lot. We'll put him in a sneeze cap then. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Absolutely. Absolutely what I was thinking right there. Uber is popped in this <laughs> upper hallway to defend or to keep that heavy alive. We'll see if blue can push into this. Red losing a lot of players, but they do have this crits ready. Yeah, and a great jump stab really kind of shuts down that heavy, which is important. Now Red has to really, you know, hit that tab button and push out here. Keep maybe one person back to prevent a back cap or an engineer, but you've got numbers here. You can push out, you can make a run. A uh, minute and a half left. And they still have got that crit, so they're uh, in a good position. Oh, but losing Cheat Commander right there to a sticky trap by Fixer. Again, he was doing that nice guarding the doors action. So uh, no heavy right there, and uh, Demo being taken out as well, and uh, that mini sentry doing work right there. <laughs> yeah, hero mini. Yeah, I was surprised he's running Widowmaker with the minis. I prefer the Frontier Justice, personally, but, you know. It's true, it's true, but you, you get that smaller clip that uh, sometimes you just need to keep shooting in order to find that spy or whatever. Yeah. Here comes the crits pop, finally, by Red. They've been holding it for a while, but it is going to be a defensive pop, not what they wanted to do with this. Gonna clear out the hallway, but yeah, not, not enough. They were a bit out of position. They got Fixer, they got Ranroll, so they did take down a lot of Blue's power classes. Again, I think it's a good point for them to move out. But look at that clock. I'm really rooting for him. I know, but like, just keep running. Just keep going. I, uh, I don't think it's possible. No, and we have a backup going on right now. That's not going to distract Red. They are just they just want this cap, anything, to uh, make this a little less painful. They will right. have second right here. And they, now, they're, now they're pushing, now they're being aggressive, now they're not looking back. Uh, but it, again, it's, it's, it's too little too late. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the Violent Femmes, which is a great team name, by the way. I complimented everyone's individual names, but Violent Femmes is a great overall team name. They take it 2-0 in pretty handy fashion against the Grammar Nancys. Violent Femmes looking very good right there, so um, excited about seeing some nice things from the mostly all, all Lady Gamer team. Lady Gamer! Lady Gamers, but the Grammar Nazis. Is, is, that a, is that a better term than Girl Gamer? Yeah, I'm trying, Lady to, gamer? I'm trying to start it. Okay, all right, just... oh, I'm on board. All right, good, out. good. Spread it. <laughs> uh, so, and you said you, you hadn't seen much of uh, fast lane, just or, or pro lane now. And pr impressions? Do you think it might ever come back for any of the seasons, I, Highlander wise? Yeah, I love it. Uh, Five CP is so hard in Highlander, and uh, with with maps like Greenery, Croissant, uh, Gully Wash, they just stalemate so easily. But uh, this look, this had a lot of action. Uh, you know, Red did have a bit of trouble pushing out of last and um, getting some of that uh, momentum and aggression going. But I think it does have a real potential. Right, it is a little bigger, which might help with some of the Highlander uh, choky problems. All right, well, that's going to do it for us here at THS. I'm Hexagrams. And I'm Kip. You guys have a good night.